Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do what I said I'd do. We've hit 100 subscribers, actually 101 I think, at the time of making this video. So I'm going to do what I said and show you my entire late war impression, uniform and the equipment that goes with it. So let's get started with the basics now. Alright guys, so let's go with what I've got on so far. I've got on the M43 buckle boots. These are the Miltec ones. They're really nice. I've uh, had got nothing but good things to say about them really. I actually use them quite a lot as my normal walking boots because they're so comfortable. Um, had about five coats of dubbing on them now and they've been airsoft in a few times as well as events. They've got a bit of wear and mud on them so that's all nice and good. We've got the Miltec M43 trousers. These are the newer type. They come pre-faded so they don't have any of that shine on them. They really nice. I got them from Epic Military and I've got the matching jacket which I'll show you in a minute. They're really good, really high quality. Superior to the K Canvas ones. If you're in the UK, if you're going to buy some M43 trousers or an M43 jacket, do not buy the K Canvas ones. Go for the Miltec ones. They're, they're superior and cheaper. So uh, that's my bit of advice for you there. And then in terms of the shirt, this I believe is an original. It's just, I see no way that it can be a reproduction. It's completely different to all the reproductions I've seen. It's marked up as a 2nd Armoured Division at Corporal rank, which is how it was when I got it, and the entire impression is marked up as Corporal rank. So they're the basics of the uniform. And as you can see, I've got the earlier pattern of braces, as opposed to the M44 45s. Uh, these braces were used until the end of the war, so it isn't incorrect to have them at the end. And um, they're much nicer, I feel, than the 44s which are a bit, well, I just don't, I don't think they're as good. So that's the basics of the uniform, so I'll grab the jacket now. Right guys, so here's the jacket on. Again, this is the Miltec M43, the pre-shaded. Again, marked up as Corporal, with the 2nd Armoured Division insignia. Again, this jacket is lovely. I think I'm going to buy a couple more of these, so I can have one for a uh, later war airborne impression, and also so I can have one unmarked with nothing on it, just as my day-to-day -day jacket, because they really are that nice. I've actually got the hood attached to mine. I believe the hood on mine is original. I found it at a fair. I can't confirm that but I think it is original. Um, obviously I'm in Britain so even if you go out and do events in the summer half the time you're going to get rained on. So it's nice to be able to just pop the hood up. Um, before anyone points out, yes I know that isn't fully attached where you do it right up around your neck and you have about five layers around here and it goes all nice and tight. I don't think you really need that most of the time in, in Britain. If we were out doing some winter event or something, which, to be honest, never had the chance to do, then uh, I could put the hood on so it does the whole thing, where it comes right tight, wraps around you like that. But for day-to-day -day use, you just want it attached like this loosely so you can wear it normally. So that's the jacket. Really nice. I recommend these again to anyone over the K-Canvas stuff here in the UK. These Miltec ones are just superior. So grab one of them for yourselves and have yourself a nice jacket, even if it's not for an impression. Now, next up, I'm gonna cover headwear. Now usually, you'll find me with just the wool knit, like, beanie hat on. I can't remember what they actually call them off the top of my head, but I tend to just have this on at events. Um, that's much easier to move about with. There's photos of them being just worn like this. And um, when you're talking to the public, you're often looking up if you're down doing stuff on events and stuff. If you've got your helmet on, it makes it a little bit awkward. And over the course of days, this is much more comfortable to have on and it does keep your head nice and warm. However, it doesn't mean that that's all I have. I do have a helmet, which you can see here in the corner. If I pick that up and bring it to the screen a bit closer. So, this is my M1 helmet. Hopefully you can see that well in the camera. That came with my Jeep trailer when I bought it. That's a rear seam. It's got a reproduction strap that I fit to it. When I got this, this was um, a complete mess. That had like about 15 coats of paint on it as a real mess. As you can see, that's got the Vietnam, I believe, air liner, if I get that in the light for you. So this, I'm waiting to change out. I'm waiting to find a nice liner. And obviously that means I can't have the front strap, which is a bit of a annoying. So this is a work in progress, but I have sanded it all down, I've redone the corking on it, which I think has come out real nice, painted it all up, fitted the new strap, and it looks the part, I think, just need to change the liner. But it doesn't quite fit my head, 
it's a little tight, so you do get a bit of a head mark. But there you have it, the M1 helmet. So uh, I'm not that up to date on the helmets. I don't know all the intricacies of the different ages. I know this liner is almost certainly Vietnam era. I know it's not wartime, um, but that's something to get done in the future. This is a work in progress, like all impressions are always a work in progress. But for now, this helmet I think really does do the part and uh, hopefully in the not too distant future we'll find that helmet for it and get it finished. Right guys, now for the web gear that I have for the late war impression and for this I'm just going to take the helmet off for a little while because uh, I'm in a closed room and the wood burn is going and I'm already absolutely boiling. So let's go over this quickly, I'll bring it up a bit closer for you. So you've seen some of this before in my other videos, so you've got the 44 pattern suspenders with the uh, 43 e tool in the 44 pack, you've got your M1 bayonet in its scabbard, tent to the side, you've got your Garand, or you, you know, the cartridge belt, that is full of clips, fully loaded clips, obviously with inert rounds. You've got the later pattern of canteen cover, I think the only difference of them is a, a seam. Um, but I can't be 100% on that right now. There's basically no difference between these and the earlier pattern. This is a reproduction piece. It's the, I believe, the only reproduction piece on this entire web gear set. So I haven't managed to get hold of an original, the right colour yet. That's got a stainless contain canteen in it with a cup. If I just get that out. There you go, so that's an original canteen. What we got dated on there, 1943. And the cup, I believe, yes, 1941 on the cup. I'll show you that. That's the one with the really nice, obviously obvious brass handle. That and the canteen. I've got multiple canteens, but this is just the one I happen to have in at the moment. So take that out. And put it back in here. And in a second, we'll get back on camera. Right, so. And lastly on here, if I can get it round. Where are you hidden? There you are. You've got the later pattern of medical kit. This is uh, a pouch, sorry. This is bigger than the earlier ones. And inside it, it actually has an original steel, steel pra uh, package bandage in it. So that is the web gear. Now let's see if I can get it on on camera without taking forever. And also without making a complete idiot of myself. The answer to that is no. I'm going to do that off camera and then get back to you. There we are, we're back and now instead of me looking like an idiot for five minutes trying to fit the web gear, I can go straight to it here. So this is the most of the uniform fitted with the web gear. If I just grab the helmet, pop that on. Hopefully I'm all in frame. So this is the majority of the uh, late war impression that I've put together. Still a work in progress obviously. Need to sort that helmet out. Spin it around on the back you can see. I probably need to replace the uh, e-tool cover because that is very, very faded. So I'll probably grab another one of them at some point. What other changes do I want to make? Need to get an original canteen cover for this. And one of the things I really want to get hold of if I just go to here, this is my M45 cargo bag. This won't fit to an M44 pack. I want to get a proper M44 cargo bag to finish this gear off here. And then I can fit to the bottom if I want, but it's more likely that this will always stay loose. When you go to events, these are really handy uh, to have all your bits and pieces in your food, your mess tin and everything. You can have it in here. It's nice and easy to get to and use especially when you're in a vehicle like me. So I'll just pop that back out of the way. So let me just go over a couple of other items that I take with me in terms of clothing for the impression. i just grab this here. This is a really nice reproduction bandolier. It is full of uh, M-block clips, all loaded, and it has the cardboard inserts. Really nice little piece there that I got. That's made by a chap with an Etsy store, uh, We Standalone Reproductions, the name is, if any of you fancy grabbing one. 
Uh, they obviously don't come with the clips, but they do come with the card inserts. So if we uh, chuck that on. There you go, a nice bit of extra weight to go on the impression. So you've got your bandolier. Then what I tend to always have with me as well is a pair of the reproduction, just little wool gloves. These are from Soldier of Fortune. They don't cost a lot of money. Again, it's often quite cold here, so uh, it's always good to have a pair of gloves, especially if you're sleeping out, which uh, I tend to do a lot at events. Um, we're often out, out until the early hours of the morning, if not all night, uh, to just do a bit of living history, so stuff like that. So good to have a pair of these. Obviously I've covered the little hat. You can also use the uh, Jeep cap, as they call it, the liner that goes under the helmet. These are also meant to be worn under the helmet. So uh, these are handy. Definitely pick yourself up one of them if you can. And the other item that I find is a real lifesaver is this wool scarf. Again, you can get these from Soldier of Fortune. They're the tube type scarfs, as you can see there. So these are brilliant. Now, I'm obviously often driving around in the Jeep to events. Sometimes early morning, you're getting in autumn, early spring, might only be very low, like four degrees centigrade. By the time you've driven an event, you are frozen through. Now you wrap this around your neck and tuck it into your jacket, you'll be getting, you'll be getting too hot. These things are brilliant. So I advise picking yourself up a scarf. Now, obviously this impression is predominantly for being a rifleman. Mine's an NCO, but contrary to popular belief, not all NCOs walked around with Thompsons. That's just not the way it was. A Garand is the default weapon. You can also use this with a, a Springfield and um, for example, I've got a 1903 A3 Springfield, which was not very commonly used in Europe, but they were about. There's some photos of military police and stuff like that with A3s, and also they were often given to uh, rear echelon troops, um, which didn't need, obviously, a Garand, and might not have had a carbine available, so they'd give them an A3, an 1903 A3, excuse me. Uh, so. That would just be a bit different, and I intend to use this with my A3 sometimes, just because uh, it's a nice gun, basically, and you don't see it very often. Right, so uh, I think that's basically it, guys. I don't think I've missed anything out. We've got the headgear, we've got the footwear, the trousers, the shirt, the jacket. You've got your bandolier, the hull, hull web gear. Just missing that cargo bag. So, again, not perfect. Work in progress. And at events, as a general rule, to be honest, normally the 44 pack won't be on the web gear. That'll have a general purpose, purpose strap on it and slung around my neck, because I like to use pack boards. So obviously I need to be able to put stuff on the back, which you can't do if you've got a pack on. So thanks for watching. This has been something that has been requested by quite a lot of people for me to show an entire impression. So hopefully I haven't disappointed. Any feedback, please give me. Uh, constructive comment. Uh, Excuse me, I'm getting a bit of a stutter on. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Um, just being a jerk obviously isn't. I ain't got a lot of time for that sort of thing. But we're over 100 subscribers now, which is the first real milestone, I suppose. Uh, next one, I suppose, will be, what, 250? So if you like the comments, uh, like the content and any comments I give, please do like and subscribe. Uh, any questions, I'm always going to try and help you out, guys, because that's what the channel's for, really. And uh, soon the events start, we've got one coming up in less than a month. So soon we'll start to be able to show you some other things and that would be good and hopefully the stuff you'll enjoy. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.